What's going on guys? Welcome back to our channel. This is your boy CK. Back again with another video waiting to happen. How on a day? I know all of you they enjoy your weekend. They work at JJ Wiley Toilet Toilet. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about Solomon Temple that has been sent to prison to serve 20 days in prison because of the issue he had with Alf Lokao. You know, the issue here is not about 20 days, you know, serving in, in prison, but seven thousand dollars as legal fee against solomon temple and also we're going to look at the ecoe building collapse so these are the things that we're going to look at after this short intro <music> So welcome back guys if this is the first time you're coming across our channel i appreciate you please don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and family so let's get into today's video so solomon temple made a video that i saw about maybe a week ago i saw that video today and i was like wow so finally this guy is going to jail because of you know criticizing what a pastor said and now not just that he's going to prison for 20 days he has to pay $7,000 as legal fee being awarded against him, maybe by the judge or whoever, you know, in that video. Because of what? Telling someone, stop deceiving people. Telling someone, stop lying to people with the name of God, with the name of our Lord. I believe this is what happened. I don't really know what transpired between them, but, you know, when you look at the way the men of God in our society today are going, the way they are handling things, you know, the way they are conducting their businesses, you will understand that they can't stand criticism. They don't want anyone to criticize them. So let's hear from Solomon. Watch that video if you've not seen it. And I'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. Um, I have to say something very uh, special. I'm right now at uh, a prison, as you can see all around me. Uh, and I'm going into prison uh, because of my situation with Alf Lukau. Alf Lukau is the pastor who allegedly claimed to have raised somebody from the dead three years ago. So I'm going to be here for 20 days as a prisoner of truth. So you would not see me for a little bit. So please keep praying for me, keep praying for my family. Thank you so much for some of you that have been supportive with your prayer. Some of you have been supporting me financially and, and helping out my legal cost. I have a lot of legal cost. And please, uh, if you want to support me legally, uh, financially, please do so. Look at the other videos and you're going to see all the details on my videos. And please, because I have to now pay his legal cost, help me, support me financially so I can, you know, pay the legal cost that is left. There's, you know, I think about $7,000 or so. Uh, please do that so we can get this over with so guys when jesus was here on earth a lot of people even his own people criticized jesus even his own people mocked him they said things like is this not the one that his father is a carpenter not just that they did stop there they went ahead and crucified jesus on the cross but at the end of the day did jesus cause them no rather he prayed for them he said father forgive these ones because they do not know what they are doing that's what jesus said so when you call yourself a christian you're supposed to follow the steps of christ if someone criticizes you you're supposed to understand that this person is saying something even if you are not seeing what that person is saying think about it sleep over it ask people around you this thing someone said about me is it true you know but today our preachers our pastors they have recruited their armies you know ready Equip them with gadgets, stroll on all streets of social media, you know, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Walk around, see those people that are saying those things that I don't want to hear. Check for those ones that are saying that things I'm doing are not right. This is what our pastors have turned into. They have Lego team ready to prosecute you because you said, Haba, man of God, this one no follow now. No do things like this. No come tell us, say, you fit make money rent. If you make person, we no work, make dollars fly, enter your account. Don't talk that kind of thing. You know, the moment you say things like this, they will come after you. Some will even go as far as issuing threats. Don't ever mention my name. Don't use my picture. Don't do this. Don't do that. But these people are the same people using the Bible. Are they the ones that wrote the Bible? They are using the Bible. They use the image of Christ 
everywhere, all over. Those images, did they shoot it? No. You know, you see on, on YouTube, African Nolly or something like that, Celebration TV, attacking people all, all the time. You know, trying to close down channels that said, no, this one, no photo, no talk like this. It doesn't take and it doesn't cost anything. You know, they have their legal teams. They will send you to jail. They will send you to, you know, drag you to court. Things like that. When we know that in Africa, in Nigeria, in the world at large, I don't think there is any pastor that can stand what T.B. Joshua withstood while he was alive. Everybody talked about T.B. Joshua. Even pastors criticized T.B. Joshua. But did you hear for once that T.B. Joshua is in court with any person because he said this man is performing, you know, F miracles? No, he didn't do a thing like that. Bishop David Oedepo even said that he doesn't have that time to drag you to court or to prosecute you or even to arrest you or even talk to you because you're saying ill things about him. That if he stops your means of livelihood, that he will still be the one to pray for you tomorrow. To get a job to pray for you you know to thrive for your be for your youtube channel to be successful for whatever thing you're doing to be successful that you still be the one to do that so for him to waste his time praying for you again let him use that time and do some other things he doesn't have time to listen to anyone talking about him or other pastors in nigeria that people have said a lot of things about them even or they've said so many things about him has he taken anyone to court? No. Pastors criticized T.B. Joshua. He stood all these things. Is it Pastor Deboye? What of the man with uh, deeper life? Kumui. They've said a lot of things about him. So, but these pastors today, they are abusing their powers. They are abusing their calling. They are behaving in a way that people now see them as politicians. People see them as politicians. Our former president, good luck Jonathan, did not drag anyone to court because they said things about him. They even called him clueless and lazy. He didn't drag anyone to court. The current vice president of Nigeria, people have said a lot of things about him, but you still see him smiling. The man, they smile, they walk out. Even using one hand, holy umbrella, go where they go. They're happy because he's a pastor. He doesn't have that time. Rather, he wants the country to be successful as a vice president. Him, himo. I mentioned the vice president. Politicians, we know how they behave, but pastors are now adopting that move. Now, I saw this uh, publication where they said an SA to the president said something like, he stopped going to church because pastor criti criticized the president. That is the work of spiritual leaders, church leaders, that is their work, to say the truth to power. In the Bible, it happened. They told David the truth, Solomon, Saul, so they told all these people the truth and they didn't kill anyone. They didn't even send anyone to jail. They didn't even summon any of them. Rather, they said, what is the solution? When, so when David made a mistake, he sought for solution to his problem. He repented. But these ones, when you tell them, this thing you've done is wrong, they don't want to repent. Rather, they will even lock you up and throw the key away. So this is how religion has turned into in our society. You're talking about corruption. You think that it's only when you're stealing money from the government coffers that you're, that you're corrupt. When you're stealing money that belongs to the people, now you are corrupt. It is not just that. You know, when you can stand and tell someone because of the way you're, you're dressed, your hair cut, the, your hair color, you can't make heaven. You know, you don't become a shower. You be all shit. You know, you don't do this one, you don't do that. You criticize that, but you cast that person completely because you're standing on the pulpit. If that kind of thing comes back to you, oh God, because you they wear suit, but they tell us, say, you fit, make this one red. You go vex, call police, or you go and arrest this person. I have my legal team, and wherever you are, I will hunt you down. But you can't stand that which you are dishing out. Not be corruption be that, because you know, say, when that time when you they talk all those things, they lie, lie to people. That they can't give you money. Maybe corruption be that. Corruption is in our system to the extent that election they come. The people where they go, where they cry, say government know they do us well, and then they collect 4,000, one kind of mold so that they go vote. The same youths that protested against the government, against police, now them still they come to print all the ballot papers 
helping politicians to rig the election in Anambra State. So, this is the problem that we are having. Now, let's talk about the Ikoyi building collapse. This building, I believe the builder, the owner of the building, they all got approval from the government. If it is not from the Ministry of Works and Housing, they got it from town planning office. Because every city is planned. They have all the designs, the residential area, the recreational area, the industrial area, the parks and everything. They have that design. And they've mapped out the number of story buildings that you can build you know, in a particular place. So they got this approval, I think about for, for about 15 story building. And the man went ahead and built 21 story. And not just 21 story. Had it been he built 21 story with quality materials, standard building, no problem. He built it in a, with substandard materials, trying to cut corners so that he will come and sell it 1.5 million to 5 million dollars in Nigeria at the expense of who? The poor ones that perished in that building that collapsed. Our government, the government of the state, they were all passing there. Even the governor that came after the building collapsed or the former governor that came after the building collapsed, all of them have been passing there. They've been seeing it. The people that work at the town planning office, the Ministry of Housing, they saw it and they know what they approved. Why didn't they send officials to go and ask these people? We approved 15 stories for you and you are building 21. What happened? Where did you get that approval? Because they've collected money. And now this building collapsed. He didn't just kill the owner of the building. Innocent people perished in that building. Husbands, sons, children of people perished in that building. Coppers, even those that were supposed to fly to America, perished in that building. The man's family, the wife and his brothers, they are after money and luxurious cars. They are fighting. The man's corpse is still in the mortuary. They are not talking about the lives of those that perished with the man. But they are fighting over money. You know, so when you talk about corruption, corruption is not just in government house. Corruption is in the church. Corruption is also in our families. Why fight over money? Why send someone to jail? Because the person criticized you and you don't like it. And you want him to pay $7,000. Very unfair. So like this video, subscribe, share it to your friends and families. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.